What's up YouTube, Mile High Campers coming back at you again with another video and on today's episode we're going to be doing a review of Sylvan Lake State Park in western Colorado. In this review we'll be covering the amenities of the campground as well as the activities to do in the surrounding areas and at the end we'll do a short moto vlog of some of the trails that we were able to access from the campground. As you can see, Sylvan Lake is a bit of a drive. It's about three hours west of Denver, but I'm telling you guys, it's one of those places that I think is a diamond in the rough. Not too many people know about it, and it's a really beautiful spot once you get there. It's well worth the drive. If you are coming from Denver, it's basically a straight shot west up I-70 until you hit the town of Eagle, and then it's about 15 miles south of the town of Eagle, Colorado. And don't be fooled, it may only be 15 miles from Eagle, Colorado, but I'm telling you, once you get back down in here, guys, it really feels isolated. You really do feel like you're in the woods. It's a great spot. Here we've got a bird's eye view of the park. At the top there you see there's the road to Eagle. Yes, it is a dirt road. However, it's not dirt all the way to the town of Eagle. It's probably dirt only about one or two miles, maybe a little bit more uh, to the park entrance. Then at the bottom of the screen here is where the lake starts. You can kind of see that there. Toward the top here we've got the entrance to the park. And this is where you will come in at uh, to gain access to the lake and to the parking areas as well as the campground. Keep note, if you do reserve a camping spot, which you can do online and I'll include the links in the description, you still have to pay the park fee. I'm not exactly sure what that fee is for this particular park, but usually it runs, I think, between like 7 or $8 per day. So just keep that in mind here in case you do get a campsite here, that that daily fee is not included in the uh, campsite reservation. However, if you have a Colorado State Parks Pass, it will cover that daily fee. So next up, we've got the two day-use parking areas. To the right here, we've got one of the cabin rental locations. Next up, we got the very important dump station. Moving to the left of the screen here, we've got the Upper Elk Run Campground. All right, so moving in a little closer here, guys, on the Upper Elk Run Campground, we can see that this campground holds sites 1 through 17. All 46 sites at this campground, guys, are no hookups. They're all basic sites. You can see here that they've got some pull-through sites on the Upper Elk Run, and they've got some back-end sites. The sites are all smooth gravel and level for the most part, and they're spaced out nicely. You've got a little bit of room between you and the next camper. Now moving to the left of the screen here, we've got the Lower Elk Run Campground. The Lower Elk Run is sites 18 through 34, and it's the same thing as the upper. They've got the pull-through sites around the outside, the back-end sites toward the inside, the sites are on soft gravel, fairly level for the most part, and of course, no hookups. Next, we have the Fisherman's Paradise Campground. Okay, zooming in on Paradise Campground, it consists of sites 35 through 46, and as you can see, they are all back-end sites, and they pack them in like sardines. We stayed here our first night, and it wasn't horrible, but we definitely preferred the spot we had the rest of the week, which was in Lower Elk Run Campground. The bonus of Fisherman's Paradise is that you are really close to the lake, but the downside is you really have no room between you and the next camper. The Elk Run Campgrounds, in our opinion, were definitely the preferred site but if Fisherman's Paradise is all that's available, it still gets the job done. Again, all sites are level and no hookups. Next, we got the boat ramp. Now, don't get too excited. They only allow non-motorized boats and boats with electric trolling motors on the lake. They also have kayaks and paddle boards for rent during the summer months. All right, lastly, guys, we've got the shower and restroom facility and activity pavilion. At this location, you've got your restrooms, and then you've got a pay shower. I believe it's a quarter per minute. And then um, they also do um, activities outside this building um, on the weekends for the kids. We really enjoyed our stay at this state park. Guys, the campground itself was very well kept, very clean. All the amenities felt like they were fairly new compared to some of the other parks we've been at. The showers were decent and the restroom facilities were nice. The park staff was great and there was plenty to do. Activities in the area included 
fishing, of course. At this lake, they stock it with rainbow and cutthroat trout, but you can also catch brook and brown trout as well. And for all you fly fishermen out there, if you need any assistance with what flies to be using out at the lake, there's a place in Eagle called Eagle River Anglers, and they've got everything you'll need. So be sure to check them out and let them know Mile High Camper sent you. As mentioned earlier, you can always take advantage of kayaking and paddleboarding at the lake. In the surrounding White River National Forest, there are tons of roads, trails, jeep trails, OHV trails, and mountain biking trails that you can check out. If you want a full list of single track trails in the area for you mountain bikers, check out eagleoutside.com and they've got a trail system map. Link will be in the description. To the south of Sylvan Lake State Park in the White River National Forest, there are opportunities for dispersed camping. As always, guys, use caution when you go down these forest roads. You don't want to get your rig into a spot that you can't get it out. You don't want your rig to end up like this abandoned camper we found. But there are those opportunities out there for dispersed camping for you hardcore campers out there. Other activities in the White River National Forest can include horseback riding, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, and cross-country skiing, and of course hiking, guys. Some good things about being only 15 miles from the town of Eagle. If you forget those marshmallows for the s'mores, you can always run back to the grocery store if you need to. And then there's also places where you can get propane refills. Or if you need tackle, you can always stop by Eagle River Anglers. All right, so that about wraps it up for the review. We're going to go ahead and end it with a moto vlog, and I'll stop talking and just let you enjoy. But as always, guys, be sure to check out all the info in the description, and be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Peace! Sounds I'm breathing and hold tight